Welcome to Accelerated Collective Evolution with Darmendra Gordon. I'm Deborah Grenard, and Darmendra is uh, someone that I've recently met, I guess, just this year, earlier this year, summertime. Um, we met through the Climate Healers Organization, which is something that I've really uh, become passionate about uh, being involved with. And uh, <coughs> Darmendra is leading some processes for that group to help us to come together with this whole, he's introducing this whole concept of, of accelerated. And in these words, I believe he has chosen very specifically and intentionally. So listen closely, accelerated collective evolution. And it has a very specific purpose for uh, the changes that are um, are really needed in order to move us forward in the best way possible with all that is going on on our planet right now and all of the challenges that we're faced with as a collective. I'm going to let him talk more about that. Meanwhile, uh, welcome Darmendra. Hi. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and read your bio and then I'll, I'll turn it all over to you. Okie dokie. So, Darmenda began meditating in 1970 at the age of 12. He started training in martial arts in 1973. I guess that would have been 15-ish. He studied Kenpo Karate, Filipino Eskrima, Akai Jiu-Jitsu, Jiu -Jitsu. Aiki Jiu-Jitsu. Thank you. Yes, please correct my pronunciation. And Jeet Kune Do? No, Jeet Kune Do. Okay, excellent. Thank you. He went to India in 1979 and took initiation, which is where the name Dharmendra comes from, uh, to become a disciple of an Indian spiritual master. In 1988, he started training in Chen style Tai Chi through the Taoist sanctuary in San Diego with internal martial arts master, George Zhu. Shu. 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 Like, like your shoe, putting on a shoe. <laughs> Thank you. In 1993, he went through a, the mystical death and rebirth in Italy, where he was living at the time, after which he was able to see beyond the veil that usually separates life and death. And as a result, he is able to have access to a multidimensional spectrum of consciousness, whether directly or through beings of a higher consciousness. Garminda shifted into the vegan lifestyle eight years ago and is involved in a growing number of endeavors that support veganism climate healing, and the path of awakening as transmitted by the Buddhas through all time. And as we said, Dharmendra, Dharmendra and I met through the Climate Healers Group. He now lives in Mesa, Arizona with his wife and his two dogs. And he is the um, originator, I guess, the, uh, of the Accelerated Collective Evolution. So I'm excited to have you share this with our group today. Dermendra, thank mm -hmm. you so much for being here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, do you have that little bit I gave you that describes the Accelerated Collective Evolution that you read so well? If you have it, could you just go ahead and use sure. that for the intro? And then I'll ex just open that, open up from there. If sure. you would, please. Yes, I would love to. Okay. So let me just make it so I can see it a little better here. Okay. Okay. Accelerated collevol <laughs> evolution. I'm already evolving. Accelerated collective evolution in the world we are all living in now in it is all about accelerated collective evolution in practice first. in the world we are living in now. That's what, that's the, that's the start of it. Thank you. Yeah. All right, you want me to keep, I'll, I'll do better on the rest of it if you want me to keep Yeah, it. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Just, there was just a part missing, that was all. Okay. In brief, it is open-eyed and interactive and works with the subconscious, conscious, and superconscious minds through various methods designed to activate utilize and develop the powers and capacities latent in each of these spheres. The emphasis throughout is finding the still center within and relaxing into one's essential and unconditional being and learning to think, speak, and act 
from that place of deep, lucid, and loving wisdom. The point of each meeting will be unique and will arise as a result of the ex exponential increase in conscious awareness and intelligence of all those present as the group moves through three levels of consciousness. As a result- Through, through the three levels of consciousness, subconscious, conscious, and superconscious. Thank you. So there's an acceleration going on. Excellent. Okay. As a result, the expanded potential of the collective superconsciousness of all those present to discover innovative solutions to any and all of the problems that humanity is facing at this time will be one of the most potent and effective tools in the creative expression of compassion in action. Boom. Boom. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So where all this started, may I go ahead? Yes, please do. So where all this started taking off was in that um, online summit that you were hosting uh, with uh, Silas Rao and Jane Unchained. Um, <clears throat> on the day that uh, Jamin Shively came on, him and I, he started using the word radical collective intelligence. Mm -hmm. And a little, a little light went off in me and I went, oh, that, one, that sounds so like accelerated collective evolution. I've got to <coughs> uh, meet this guy. So anyway, that was that just kind of went in and then, uh, very soon after that was the um, the World Vegan 2026 conference in Mesa, Arizona, which was literally a couple miles from where I live. Um, and at the end of that, um, I, I was thinking out loud and I asked my wife, Amir, I said, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, uh, I heard Jamin is at this um, conference. And she says, oh, I know some people that are there. Do you want me to um, see if they can get a hold of them and you can talk to them? Because um, she's, she's, she really uh, is, is very good at... Um, you know, if there's an opening, go for it and, and, and just awesome. create, a, create a connection, you know. And um, so I said, yeah. And within a few, you know, I think less than an hour, I was um, talking to Jamin and he was telling me that, uh, it, you know, let's meet tonight because um, it was the last day of the, um, the conference. And I said, yes, let's do it. And so um, in the evening at the appointed time, he calls me and says, hey, we're doing a disruption. Um, do you want to come to a disruption? And I, I had, you know, maybe done a dozen different kinds of activism, act, you know, vegan activism activities that started um, mostly through um, the uh, impetus of my wife, Amira. And we did like animal liberation marches and, and um, vigils and things like that here in, here in, um, in the Phoenix area, not just, not really in Mesa and other parts of town. And, um, so anyway, I said, yeah, sure, let's, uh, so I showed up in a parking lot here at the place called the Golden Corral, and because I, I've lived here for a while, I said, oh my God, the, these people in here are not going to like this. I said, I don't care, you know, because I, I, I was into being, uh, into my activism at that time, and um, so we went in, and uh, the energy was like, if we had stayed much longer, they were going to lynch us or something. It was very interesting, and I knew that was going to happen, because it's very mm -hmm. close-minded here in this part of the world, especially in a place like Golden Corral. Mm -hmm. And that's literally less than a mile from where I live. It's even closer than where the conference was. It's sort of like midway between the conference and where I live. Anyway, so uh, Jamin and I met and uh, really clicked and he introduced me to this thing called radish.org where he was, um, he's working on three things, radical collective intelligence. And then through myself and others, he, he became involved and now kind of hosts the vegan collective intelligence through vegan world 2026 mm -hmm. um and also um srm which is solar radiation management which um i couldn't do justice to really talking about except to say it's a way to reflect all the heat that's coming onto the planet to keep the polar ice caps from melting so quickly so we can work on all the other problems that are facing us right now on the planet yes so anyway after he does a weekly meeting on that and um soon after the vegan collective intelligence thing started and as i became more and more involved in that i realized that if we were going to get any of this to go anywhere we needed to um learn how to become centered and come from our essence from an unconditioned place where the true power in us is that's not having anything to do with the um intense conditioning of humanity's past that's got us into this horrible collective as humanity mess we're in right now with so many different problem, problems breathing down our throats and asking us for solutions to which if we don't find them quickly, we don't really know where we're going to end up, any of right. us. It right. doesn't matter how rich you are or anything, it's uh, Mother Nature can 
Mother Nature can uh, handle anybody at any level of richness like nothing. Yeah, so, be the great equalizer uh, in this case. Yeah. So, um, so basically, um, for the last, I don't know, couple of months now, I've been involved in the Radical Collective Intelligence meetings. That, now we, we changed it from the J, Jamin on Radish.org. He had this thing called the Social Club at the End of the World, which Silas Rao said, how about at, you know, a new, the, the, how, let's see, not the Social Club at the end of the, at the end of the old world in the beginning of the new world. And so yes. what we ended up doing we is we, the to the Solution Club at the beginning of the new world. So that's what is changed into now the weekly meeting. And, and so that's where we get together and we start um, looking at uh, solutions to, uh, you know, what's coming up, um, you know, and how to deal with it very quickly. Um, and then we have the Vegan Collective Intelligence, which is kind of like the steering committee for the whole Vegan World 2026. It's all the people coming together that that are really very active in the, in the um, in Silesh Rao's um, Vegan World 2026 platform that he created on Basecamp. Um, and I also, after doing a few of those meetings, created what I call Vegan Synergy Meditation. And that's a weekly meeting that happens between 5.30 and 7.30 on um, Thursday nights, um, Mountain Standard Time. And that, if anybody's interested in, you go to Vegan World 2026, Basecamp3.com, and you sign in and, if you're, uh, and ask to become a part of that. And then Vegan Synergy Meditation happens weekly. And that's where we get into Accelerated Collective Evolution. And okay. um, let me take it for just a second here. If anybody's interested in any of the things that he's talking about and wants more information, you're welcome to message me, connect with me, and I'm happy to actually get those links to you. And let me see, I can probably find them and put them into the comments of the Facebook Live thing as well. I just wanted to put that out there. So, um, were you not at the conference in Arizona? Did you I, not we, attend any of it? We didn't, um, we, we had work we had to do over that weekend. And so we just tuned into Jane Unchained uh, live and okay. we pretty much got, we pretty much got everything. And, um, and, and, and for some reason I, I thought you had been there. <laughs> well, no, no, we didn't really need to be uh, okay. there. And since then, after I was looking, there. Just so yeah. Know. Yeah. Yeah. I figured you were. Um, but, so after that, I've been looking at uh, climatehealers.org and going through all the webinars that um, Silesh Rao puts out to be a climate healer. But I'm not necessarily knowing if I want to be certified or any of that, but I just wanted to be in the know. And mm -hmm. I, I realized that I'm pretty much caught up with all of that just in my way of being vegan. And um, Amira does um, the all about, has an all about vegan page on Facebook where she's got several thousand followers. And she's, she's one of the most comprehensive um, Facebook pages for everything about vegan from the most incredible food to the most gnarliest animal abuse. So, and everything in between. Mm -hmm. Every, so she really covers it all. And so I get very informed about the, the vegan world. I get very informed. Yeah. I invite everybody to, it's one of the, if you, if you know nothing about veganism to step into, into her world, all about vegan on Facebook, uh, you become informed very quickly. Yeah. And, she, and, and um, yeah, and she's, she responds to a lot of things too, and she's she's also very very deeply steeped into the um, the path of awakening. So she's very aware and conscious of what she does, and very intentional. Beautiful. And very, and, yeah. Can we take a minute and weave a couple of threads together here? Yes. Because I think I, is that enough of an opening? Now we want to start playing with some different things. Um, well, I want to just weave some things together for people because we we brought in we started with ex, uh, the accelerated collective evolution. Mm -hmm. And we brought in veganism and, oh, thank you, Amira. She put a, a, a link yes. in the um, yeah. Zoom chat here. Okay. Exactly. Um, so we started with accelerated collective evolution as a, mm -hmm. a way of coming together, you know, collectively to uh, face the challenges, you know, find solutions mm -hmm. to facing the challenges mm -hmm. that, you know, our, our collective is, is uh, up against right now. And then we just kind of brought in you know, climate healers, I mean, which makes a lot of sense. And we brought in veganism. Not everybody recognizes the, the um, connection between all of those. Uh -huh. So if we, if, would you like to say that? Or you sure, I can, I, I, can weave all that, I can weave all that together real quickly. I mean, okay. veganism, veganism for me was a natural outcome of 40 years of being a vegetarian on the path and then realizing that that wasn't enough. Because what they do to cows um, through the, the, the milk and dairy industry and what they do to chickens with the egg industry and all of it. Um, 
basically the essence of this, the path of awakening, um, any true real path of awakening, um, in terms of uh, the other, whether it's human or other life forms, is to participate in relieving the suffering of all sentient beings. And the primary number one, you know, golden ground of being a vegan is living that, not just talking about it. And, and through everything, you do not buy any product that has any animal, any animal exploitation in it whatsoever. So it's kind of taking that thing of spirits, the path of spiritual awakening, and really um, standing in those shoes and standing in that ground and really living it all the way through every act you have and not harming any beings no matter what for no fancy excuse uh whatsoever i mean there are very high spiritual people that have really fancy excuses for why they're still eating meat and to me if you're eating violence and fear and 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 um you know what goes through the animal's chemistry that is released into their bloodstream that you're eating and you're, and you're calling yourself spiritual when at the very most basic level, you're creating this um, distinction, this, this kind of, it's almost like you're, you're detached or dissociated from your physical body and all you care about is this spiritual stuff and your physical body isn't important because it isn't going to be here forever, just in this lifetime. But that to me is a false spirituality because you have to live fully in this body to express this spiritual awakening in this world here now, or, or why else would you be here? I mean, mm -hmm. really, without mm -hmm. having to go into more, um, you know. So the bottom line is, I, I found that to be a natural expression of the true path of spiritual awakening was to put it all the way down into my actions and harm no creatures whatsoever. And the only way to do that is to become a, a vegan. And I'm not mm -hmm. saying or forcing any, oh, go ahead. I, yeah, I and, and I want to just add a piece to that because I've been working with Silesh on this uh, uh, frequently asked question thing mm -hmm. for, you know, for the uh, mm -hmm. Climate Healers Group. And, yes. you know, there, um, and, and um, Melissa's daughter got into this on Thursday night at the Vegan Synergy Meditation thing. Also, you know, about that there are some traditions where, you know, it has, it, it's, uh, sacrificing animals is a part of a sacred ritual and that it is done respectfully and uh -huh, uh -huh. ceremoniously and all of that kind of thing. And, I, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and, and I love the answer that you, that you gave. I have a great response. I have a great response to that. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, well, I'll let you go ahead and with your response. And then if well, I want to add to that, Because that's a very heated thing about sacrifice. Back in ancient times, um, when human beings uh, may have lived in very isolated places and the only way to survive might have been, unfortunately, to have to take the life of living beings because they found that that nourished them uh, but, and there was no other source of nourishment. And so there's, al there's always been like medicine men or shamans in every o ancient tribe. And so obviously they picked up on the deep guilt that happened. I mean, let's be honest, there was deep guilt in taking the life of innocent beings and eating their bodies in order to for you to survive so what could they do with that guilt well they um they spiritualized it they made it you know they they mm -hmm. made it seem in these rituals that they were really revering these beings for giving up their life but it but it's a sham because they didn't ask those beings if they wanted to give up their life they just took it and i don't care how lovingly you slit the throat of, of an innocent creature that's an ugly act it, there is no sacredness to that Yes, you can pretend that you are being sacred and all these things, but you're doing, you're, it's a heinous act you're doing and covering it up with this false spirituality that's supposedly revering the spirit of this being. If you rever something, you don't kill it. Would you do that to your brother, your sister, your mother, your kids? Would you, is that how you rever them? By slitting their throat and eating them? No. I have to get graphic there because that's the only way you're really going to see it. And that's how the animals feel. Animals feel the same way we do, just because they can't think like we do. They still feel, and most, and, and, and a lot of animals feel more than most human beings who eat really gross, heavy death foods, who can barely feel anything. So that's just the truth of the matter. I mean, so the, so the thing is, these sacrifices and this sacred, holy stuff is, was just to cover, to cover their guilt for doing that, what they did. And I, I just look into the, I just look into the, the essence of it. I'm already using the accelerated collective evolution, the aspect of centering essence, because the whole point of accelerated evolution is to come from your center and to be centered in your essence, because we need to be connected with the truth and the source of love and all power that creates everything if we're going to mm -hmm. start to bring real solutions into this world. So I'm starting to weave it back into accelerated right, collective right. Okay, evolution. Okay, let me add one piece to that, and then we'll, mm. we'll, we'll get into the accelerated collective evolution mm -hmm. piece and how that... Mm -hmm. that um, Mm -hmm. uh, 
brings us into solution. On the, uh, the and Darminder and I talked ahead of time, we weren't sure if we were gonna bring anything about veganism into it, into this in the first place, but I'm glad that we are because it is an important topic right now. And I wanted to say, I wanted to add, um, uh, number one, that in, you know, when, when I was talking with Silash the other day doing the FAQs, uh, that, you know, the point that he brought in is there was a time, you know, that there may have been a time where it was necessary to do the, you know, to, for people to survive with the animals and, and the, the sacrifices of the animals. And, and um, they did what they had to do, but it's really just not necessary anymore. It's not necessary in the world that we live in. There are, are, are other ways and we're coming to a point, and this is one of the things that I'm hoping that we'll get into as well, we're coming to a point in our, our, the evolution of our collective where we just, as human beings and animal, that relationship is not going to allow for that dependence anymore and is not going to allow for us to treat the animals in the way that we have anymore. I mean, with, yes, it's been bad all along and, and it's just, it's not going to be the, the um, uh, inner pathways, the pathways for that to even exist. So, and I want to say one other thing about veganism and climate change, and this is um, very significant, is that, you know, in the work that Dr. Salash Rao has done, he has put together a, a, all kinds of data and information and white paper and everything. It's greatly underestimated in the mainstream with the notice that it has, that it has gotten, the attention that it has gotten in terms of the effects of animal agriculture on the um, uh, greenhouse gases and climate change. It says that it's responsible. I think mainstream says it's responsible for about 15%. And it's actually way, way, way higher than that because of the amount of all these fire, forest fires that are being intentionally set to clear land for, um, for raising livestock and for raising the food for the livestock and all of the land use and the water use and the pollution and the runoff and every and the methane and everything all put together you know plus the whole every everything that's utilized by the industry and the processing and the the shipping and everything that it's it's more like you know closer to 80 percent than 15 percent and the amount of of destruction that is coming to our environment in our planet right now because of habits that we've basically been born into and brainwashed with and so much of what has told us about what we need to eat and how much of it we need to eat has been pure marketing for the sake of profit of the industries and you know and 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 I could go on and on with that but the bottom line is the reason why this this vegan um conversation is so closely tied to the climate healers conversation is because it has the most significant impact of anything on our planet right now on the the climate crisis and one of the simplest things that we could do is just to stop just to stop eating the animal products now we still have to get the government to stop subsidizing the industries and help to you know ideally use that money to transition the industries into things that are going to be more environmentally friendly and animal friendly and people friendly because it also is detriment detrimental to our health um you know and so um bottom line is there i just wanted to tie that line those two pieces together as to why we have climate healers vegan and consciousness all in the same conversation here all right back to you accelerated collective evolution <laughs> Beautifully said and th synthesized, Deborah. Thank you. Um, it's just uh, the, the thing is, it's it's accelerated collective evolution has three different facets at the initial stage, and those are the shadow, the gift, and the siddha. And this, what I just exposed just now, by and doing it in kind of a dramatic way, so that it could be felt, because you, it, to talk about a shadow and not feel it is. It, it, it's not, it doesn't really, it doesn't really grab you. You don't really um, get the impact of what a shadow is. And the collective shadow at the moment on the planet is involving a tremendous amount of um, suffering um, as business, as business as usual in the everyday life of most of humanity. It's in a tremendous amount of suffering going on as a result of it, as you were just explaining. Um, and then at the individual level, 
the idea of shadows has to do with what is particularly challenging you in your life right now and where you feel either stuck or unloved or dissociated from the world or spaced out or y you name it, whatever it is that's keeping you from being here and now present in your life and whatever you're doing about it, and that could be addiction or any number of things that is, is for you to compensate for this, um, basically this void that you might be feeling in one way or another. Um, and so to come into an honest relationship with yourself and start to become sincere with your process in life is the first step in getting your power back and starting to own your experience again and starting to stand in, in your own shoes and start to move away from the conditioning that was put into you as you, in your whole development as a child and growing up um, and start to release yourself from that. So the way to do that is, is to you to take ownership. You start to take ownership for those defense mechanisms that you incorporated into your behaviors and into your beliefs and into your identity and into your value systems. And you just take ownership of it and you feel it again and you honestly admit, well, I'm really afraid of, um, you know, I'll just give an example of a shadow that a person might be going through. I, I feel really afraid now of what's going on in our government after what's just happened. And the fact that, that it feels, it's starting to feel more and more unsafe in this climate. And it makes me not feel very comfortable um, about my future. And um, so I start to lose my connection with that sense of security I have even in, even in the neighborhood I live in and the people I, I, I start to lose trust with my fellow man. And that's kind of an example of what engaging your world in an honest way is and honestly admitting what the world we're living in now, if you're paying attention and you're you know, involved at all the different levels that life calls you to, including the news. And because the news nowadays is quite something and it's, um, I think it's also um, worthwhile to uh, be aware of it because it's, it's starting to have an impact in so many levels of our life. And so a lot of times the shadow has to do with that. <clears throat> but on, a, on a, a bigger scale, on a collective scale, the, um, <coughs> the prime, one of the prime movers of the collective shadow has to do with the animal agriculture industry. And so to me, that's a, a, a central topic. It's almost like as central as as your own personal shadow is to you is the collective shadow is to humanity mm -hmm. because, because of the effect it's having on the climate, 87% of greenhouse gas emissions, um, according to Silas Rao, who I tend to trust and believe, um, having met him and, um, you know, hung out with him and related with him. And, uh, you know, um, he just seems like an honest man and very, 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 very well educated on the subject he's talking about. Yes, and, and um, making sure to have no financial ties to his, um, uh, uh, his, his purpose. Right, exactly. Yeah. As I don't at this point either. This is all just me offering because I see we're at such a critical place in our life. And so um, in terms of collective evolution, as I open that fear up and I, I, I realize that um, it makes, you know, it makes me very exposed and very vulnerable. And, and so what we do in, collect, in accelerated collective evolution is we we're literally accelerate that frequency of consciousness by opening up our heart and bringing that feeling uh, and that kind of like state or of being of who we are as that scared child, or you could even be a, an adult these days, you could even be a scared adult because of what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and you bring that into your heart and you just, and you, you give it all the love you can, like a mother loves a child, her own child. And um, you just allow that shadow to kind of absorb itself into your heart and melt into your whole bloodstream. And as you do that, um, of course, I just took a, a breath. So obviously, I'm opening to more life in that moment. And I'm allowing, uh, you know, the life force through my breath to come in and start to address this, this shadow. And as I do that, I realize I can only be responsible for this moment. And I can only uh, be here now, I can only be present with what's occurring to me, and be as impeccable as I can in facing whatever's in front of me in this moment. I'm still here. I, I mean, 
Um, it may be, you know, whatever's going on around me. Uh, I can only do so much through my actions. And that's just dependent on what skills I have to offer the world. And so if I, I take a look at that, um, I can see that there's, you know, things I can do. There's things I can do in the world that could have a positive impact. And if I, I use the example of veganism, I could go out and start being active. I could, st I could start um, talking to my friends about, and it may be an indirect way, you know, not, not so um, suddenly and strikingly as I did earlier in, in, in this meeting, but um, because I don't, I, I don't want anybody to, you know, um, be overwhelmed by this, um, this intensity of the vegan um, situation, message, whatever. It's, it's, it's about peace. It's about peacefulness. It's mm -hmm. about living, living from a place of peacefulness and supporting peacefulness um, so that everything has a right to be in peace in the world, you know. And that has a totally different energy to it. That's more from the gift perspective, what the veganism is about. See, if you taste that, what I just put out now is compared to the way I came into it so intensely and almost harshly um, earlier. And that's kind of a shock, but that's what a shadow is. It's, it's the shock that closes you down as a child and makes you, uh, you know, defend yourself because you think your life is at stake because you have these giant beings telling you things that go ag against who you are naturally. Right which may be good. It might be for your safety too. You never know. It depends on the situation, but it also depends on how they make you safe and how they help you to be safe. But in this case, in walking the path of peace, it's, I mean, that's the beautiful, to me, that's the heart of veganism. It's, it's, it's living um, in your thoughts, words, and deeds from a peaceful place. And um, that's only something each person can find in themselves. It's not something anybody else can tell you. It doesn't matter how much you hear about climate healers or um, where the planet's headed or all those things that were expressed in the shadow. It doesn't matter about any of that. It's about your heart. And when your heart is um, touched by something, whether it could be a beautiful thing, but it could also be a, a sad thing. Or it could be that you realize one day you're going to die and, and um, nothing is guaranteed. And something that takes you out of your usual, you know, routine and makes mm -hmm. you want to find, find answers. And mm -hmm. um, feel makes a longing. You, uh, yeah, right. A longing. It could, yeah. I mean, it's, and, and it, you never know what kind of a situation may touch you and make you want to seek out something. I mean, for me, I think what really got me going was the Tao Te Ching. When I was 14 years old, I picked up that book by Lao Tzu and I started reading it and it just took me on a journey energetically and visually and internally. And I just, I literally felt like I was, um, at, it was just indescribable. I became water. I became earth. I became air as I was reading this book. And, wow. and it was just incredible you know, to energetically, obviously. And um, it just moved me. And it, it's, and, and so that, that is also another example of a gift is being guided by something of that um, comes into your life and just takes you in a whole direction. You've nobody ever even spoke about before to me, anything like that. So <clears throat> those are a lot of different aspects of, of what I, um, can utilize in terms of opening up my gifts into the world, you know, because we all share those that we all share earth and water and fire and air. And, and you can get very creative about how, you know, water can be feelings. So maybe you're really naturally attuned to feelings. So you connect with people through feelings or, or air, maybe you're really connected to mental stuff and, and air is more, much more like the mind, very flitty and changey. And sometimes it's big, sometimes it's small, quick, slow, high, low, depending. So, so you might be a very mental person and zip around like that. And so you can come from air or earth. You could be a very grounded person. It's like, well, you know, making stuff happen. Let's get this, to, let's get this to move. How do we, who do we talk to? Where do we get the finances from? Who's going to back us? You know, it, it, so, I mean, it, you can get very creative about, um, and that I call sacred geometry. That's kind of what you move into when you move into the gift. It's more about the sacred geometry of life and that there's, everything in life is kind of reminding us that we have so many tools we can use. We've been given an imagination that's also a gift and to use it creatively is almost like a miraculous ability, i.e. a siddha, which is the next step um, in the, mm -hmm. in the three step process from shadow gift to siddha. Um, can I, so um, that's, 
at this point, yeah, if questions. you want to, sure, on the gift uh, frequency. Yeah. Okay. So you, you started out talking about shadow and then you moved into talking about gift. Mm -hmm. Now you, you brought in sacred geometry. Now when you talk about sacred geometry, you're talking about the elements. Were you tying that to? I'm talking the, about, I'm talking about the essence of sacred geometry has to do with numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, monad, dyad, triad, tetrad, pentad, um, point, line, triangle, square, pentagon, hexagon, sacred geometry. Mm -hmm. uh, within, within those, you know, s simple, you know, certain numbers, you can correlate, like the days of the week is, um, it was an ancient way for um, uh, people to keep track of time and give a sense of time, but uh, the days of the week were, after, were named after the known planets at that time, in, including the sun. And so at that time, there were only six planets they knew, including the moon. So there was really only five planets and then the sun. Um, but five is good for the elements. Um, you know, and there's different, you can, and so any number you take, as long as you know what the essence of the number is, like the monad is obviously uh, unity. The dyad is duality. The triad is trinity. And, but you can break it down further. It doesn't have to be trinity. It can, it, you can use three in different ways too, you know but Trinity is the original one. And then four is uh, quaternity and then et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So you have these uh, different relationships that you create with sacred geometry. Um, the way I was using it in terms of the gift in relation to myself is I was just relating to any of those numbers through my own individuality. So when I stepped into the sacred geometry at the elements, that's, that's, that's five because it's earth, air, fire, water, and space. Okay. Those are the basic five. And then, and then just learning to see how those permeate every, every bit of my, from my internal organs to the way I feel, to the way I see things, to different types of people I meet, to different body types, to different methods of healing. I mean, there's so many different creative avenues you can use to serve your fellow man. And that's also a part of the gift is how do I serve? When you shift from the shadow of what can I get to the gift of how can I serve? Okay. And, and how do I open my skills to others to make this a better world for both of us? You know, and that and it, when you finally make that connection that making the better world for others also makes the world a much better place for me because then everybody else is happy too. So it just makes more sense. Right. And a lot of times I think people struggle with why should I serve others? What, what's that going to do for me? Well, if everybody around you is getting served and they're satisfied and happy, get, look at the world you get to be in. Otherwise you walk around knowing everything and everybody else is miserable. It's not much fun. <laughs> right. And, you know, and ultimately, as I say, is like, you know, what we do for ourselves is, is like, you know, if we're questioning what's in the highest, to look at, well, what is in the highest for the greater good? What is in the highest for, for others and for the planet? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, as, as nature would have it, we cannot do only for ourselves and be in the highest for ourselves and be harming the planet. We cannot be doing only for the planet and harming ourselves. It's just, it doesn't mm -hmm. work that way when we're look, really looking at what's in the highest and what's in the greater good. Right. And a couple other points I'll make is that the old way of the master and the disciples with the master being highly evolved and all the disciples wanting that state, but not quite knowing how to get there is also leaving the picture. And what's coming up is a, co a kind of space for a collective awakening to occur. Mm -hmm. And it's what, obviously, if you look around, I think that we're going to need something that powerful now. Rings of collectively awakened um, societies of enlightened, uh, however you want to call it, beings. Because the, the uh, scope of, of what's occurring on the planet is just overwhelming. It's, there's so much coming down that... Um, we need to come up with something very powerful very quickly if we're really realistically going to address it. And the second point is I use the veganism because it's a nice, and the climate healing because it's a nice way to contextualize and, and, and put a locus of manifestation for this thing called accelerated collective evolution. So it has a place to work. It has a place to where you can see things that are tangible and, and have you know, examples of it that make sense. Instead of we're just talking about some theory of the accelerated collective evolution, it, you know, it needs to have a place to land. And so veganism works well because it's very close to my heart. It's also a very real thing on the planet right now. 
uh, in terms of uh, the central like driving force of climate healing and everything else, because it's the biggest contributor on the other side from animal egg to what's harming the, the, the climate. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a good one to play with it. it and I, it's, we're, I'm not here to try and sell people on any, anything. I'm just here to say there, there is this potential that we all have now, if we're ready to take a risk and jump into it and expose ourselves and our shadows to wake up as a collective that can have a very powerful influence on the course of events that are occurring right now on the planet. Mm -hmm. that that are that are that are very um that are going to need a great amount of light and intelligence and love and compassion and guidance and so many other qualities and tactfulness mm -hmm. and the ability to change directions very quickly and make and and um you know and so the collective intelligence yeah. opens itself and to a multi-dimensional um capacity to handle lots of different things at different times that a single person just can't, no master with all his disciples can do that. Because that's those are isolated little phenomena that we're in little communes separate from the world. And that we need to come into the world now, everybody who's in the spiritual context needs to enter fully in the world as a bodhisattva, the traditional term for a person who's spiritual and lives in the world, not separate from the world. Yeah. Not an, not an arhat who's only interested in their only little individual awakening, but a bodhisattva who's interested in the uh, compassion for all beings and the awakening of all beings. Yeah, beautiful. So, um, and just to, you know, put that in, in plain terms, that we can no longer sit in on our own and long for a world of peace and harmony and sustainability and not do our part. Absolutely. Because everything matters. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's a nice way to um, highlight highlight that and and to pinpoint it and to bring a lot together in one place there that kind of links all those pieces. Yeah, that's that's a good way to say that. Um, and then to move into the, the the third phase of and after I explain these phases, then we could talk a little bit more about why would I want to do that in my life? What what good will it do me? Blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. But but that's exactly where it grew out of my life and started doing me a lot of good. So we'll get to that. But then the third phase, the Siddha, which is a miraculous ability. And um, in the beginning, I, I found that using um, the concept of a higher form of intelligence, whether that was a um, ascended master or an angel, I don't really like using those terms because they've been killed by the ignorant people of the new age who thought, who kind of pretended like they knew what those things were and spread them around and kind of um, sort of trashed them in my opinion, but uh, you know, because an angelic consciousness is um, something that we are when we're in touch with our siddhas. It's not like it's any more special than we are, but the, the difference is an angel is just like us without a body and so no longer has the dragging uh, of, of physical existence. And when that happens, that being becomes incredibly lighter and really is only moved by by the greater good. I mean, there's nothing else left because you're not an individual separate from any other individual anymore. You're connected with everything. So if you're connected with and feeling everything, you definitely have a stake in wanting everything to feel good because you're going to feel it all the time. And vegans already do that anyway. They're already feeling everything all the time. So that, that just came in as a moment for an example of what happens when you do become vegan. What happens to your nervous system is you start becoming like an angel. How funny thing. I, I, I wasn't planning on saying that, but that just came out <laughs> that way. Because yeah. you really, like, you don't have a skin anymore. And so you're not disconnected. You feel everything. And that's part of what a siddha is. It's that you are connected uh, mm -hmm. with everything. The first siddha. Here, I'll bring up something. I have here. to inter interject there too that I think, mm -hmm. you know, like everybody is on a path and, mm -hmm. um, and there is an evolution on any path. And I think that's the same is true for the path of veganism. Mm -hmm. I don't think like going vegan tomorrow will instantly make you an angel. I just, I mean, and I know that's not what you were saying, but I just had to, I could kind of hear some of the, um, the crosstalk going on there. No, that's good. That, that's good that you address that. Um, for me, when I express things, it's more of a, a way to give people a platform to use their creative imagination with and start to look into the veracity of what I'm saying. They may not find an answer for years to some of those things like, oh, being a vegan means that you don't have a skin anymore. And like, like an angel, you feel everything. Well, it's not happening to me. Right. I understand that that could happen. 
But right. at the level of but the but at the level of the siddha, if you go through the stages of shadow, which that what I just said and what you're expressing as crosstalk, that's shadow stuff. I right. doubt it. Okay. I'm afraid of it. I don't believe it. It doesn't work for me. I I don't feel up to that task. Um, screw you. I don't like what you're saying. You're weird. <laughs> you know all that stuff. Uh -huh. Whatever. Great. I mean, I, that's just the world we live in. But and it's also a part of every uh, the defense mechanisms of all of us, and that's what we do. We love that place in ourselves, so we can release the power and and move with our gift, because that's the energy we need to move with our gift and open ourselves, and we start connecting with other people through our hearts. That's what the gift does; it connects us through our hearts. And when you're in your heart, and and something comes up that sounds kind of funny, like being without a skin and being like an angel, you you might just say. Well, you might just say, well, you better watch out. You might float away. You know, a gift is, it's more, it's more light. It's not, it's not so much about cross talk as it is about, well, let's make light of that. It sounds kind of goofy. And I don't know who could get that by the way you're saying it. But the point is at the Siddha level of miraculous ability, you tune in to that place in yourself where you connect with your own divine core is what I'm trying to say. In the beginning, it's easier, it's easier if you externalize and project a, uh, um, for some people, not everybody, but for some people, a higher form of intelligence outside of you that may already be in touch with that, that you're asking them to do you the favor of sharing a little bit of that with you so you can tune into it because you're not quite ready to step into it fully yourself and take responsibility for it as an individual because you don't quite believe you can actually do that yet because nobody ever told you you could be a source of compassion or a source of universal love or a source of ecstasy or all these things that most people go, woo woo, that's just crazy new age talk. But no, it's not. To tune into those spaces gives you an intelligence that's just incredible. And it allows you capacities that you, you never knew you never knew you had. Right, right. And you never you missed it because you did. I did. Yes, absolutely. I totally get it too. Mm -hmm. And, and things you so, would not have imagined you didn't have because right, you didn't exactly. know they existed. Right. Exactly. That, good. Yes. And thank you. I wanted you to elaborate that a little bit just so we all are in the same page. And so as you move into the Siddha also, you connect through your being. Um, and, we're, and as you become more and more um, capable of doing that, you realize that at the level of being, we're all just separate. Uh, not separate, but individual facets of the same overall, um, we could call it in the, a, a uniquely created um, entity in the moment for a specific purpose. And we're all so highly attuned to each other. And not only that, but we're also so highly attuned to ourselves through our gift that we know what unique facet we have of that attunement. Because the attunement itself will be whatever the group has come together for. And if it's just to learn about accelerated collective evolution in the beginning, that's what it is with me through vegan synergy meditation and, and the other things that I talked about earlier where I share those processes. Um, it becomes a very unique um, field of interaction of individuals who are capable of bringing their unique gift to an overall, let's call it Siddic intent. That Siddic intent is something that not only is a benefit to the collective, but also reflects something of the truth of the universe, um, whether it's just the perfect order the planets spin in through space without hitting each other or ever having a problem, or the way nature creates all of its blooming, you know, loveliness. I mean, as I get into it more naturally, it's easier to connect with what a Siddha might be then, and how that kind of energy can come through a group to create an intent for the world. You can imagine some beautiful art or something coming out of an intent like that, or a way of living so artfully that every being is, is respected and every form of life has a place, a sacred place to be, including the animals. You know? So there, that's kind of what a, the flavor of a Siddha might be through veganism. I keep going back to veganism because it's just, like I said, it's the context in which I can give this a sounding board. And it's not just some vague nebulous thing. But so that, that's, and, and that's just kind of a taste of what the shadow is like, what the gift is like, and what the Siddha could be like, you know, through a, a, a vegan. But it doesn't have to be vegan. You can do it through anything. You can have an engineering project. You can do architecture. You can do a dance thing. You can, a, a music, it doesn't matter. It can be anything where a group of people come together at this, at this, with the Siddha, it always transcends the individual and it always reflects something of the peaceful functioning 
of reality at the universal level. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And that's, and where each of the gifts can come through um, and the gifts are always uh, have to do with in service to others because it's overflowing you and you're so good at it. And it makes, and it makes others feel benefited by you sharing it. So that's why it's so useful in that Siddic intent, because once all those gifts come together, it, they transcend the whole gift level and go into something bigger where the gifts are just a, a flowering facet of a tree of Siddic intent that is creating something like nature would or, or a planetary, you know, harmony of the spheres, you name it, any of those beautiful things. Or an incredible, brilliant musical composition, you know, Gurdjieff piano, if you know about Gurdjieff or <laughs> any of that kind of stuff. You know, so yeah, and and always when you get into the city, it's it's just a wonderful, luxurious place to be for a moment, and everything feels like ah, oh, this is it reminds me of home again, and this is how it feels to have some space to be and connect. <clears throat> yes, and you translated Siddha as miraculous ability. Ability, okay. Thank you. So I definitely see how we accelerate from the shadow to the gift into the Siddha to affect the collective. Mm -hmm. The collective and then contribute to the evolution of the collective, the more that we can, that we can um, accelerate into the Siddha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. <clears throat> And yeah, so in the beginning, you just basically, you just, um, I, I'll use the word train. Don't, I hope nobody's, you know, um, shy of that word train. It doesn't mean like I'm training to be an athlete. It just means train in the sense of repeating something until you get really good at it. But, we, you know, we train the shadow, the gift, and the sit, and we basically bring whatever our everyday challenge is through, for the shadow. And, and then, and then uh, we absorb it into our heart and allow our gift to come out. And it's not something, it, it, everybody, it's just natural. It's like, it's almost like um, animals when they, when they, certain characteristics of heredity that just come out at a certain point. Well, humans have those too, but they're obviously more evolved characteristics like this ability to love your shadow into a gift. It's there in everybody. You don't really, the minute you introduce that to people, they just get it. And they, they start to see that shadow from the, the position of a mother loving a child and all of a sudden it creates a whole new and it's very difficult to describe how you get from the Siddha I mean the gift to the Siddha though that as you can see you just kind of all of a sudden find yourself in this almost indescribable kind of really beautiful space that you got mm -hmm. to from the gift and it's it's just a matter of connecting it to something higher that exists in reality you know and by i don't mm -hmm. reality is not a big word it's just how the universe spins or how a molecule spins or how nature creates stuff and you just tune into that mm -hmm. and, it kind of and, feels and, like you would get there just through that loving embrace from the heart and that mm -hmm. gratitude of the of yeah. the gift of it all that could just mm -hmm. carry you there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right that, that is one uh, a beautiful description of, you also have to sink down into your being, into your belly and, and become centered in your essence, which is kind of mm -hmm. the, central, the central technique of accelerated collective evolution is centering essence. And both those terms I created, accelerated collective evolution and centering essence. So Say more about I, the centering essence, because that's something I've really been working with a lot in, in my groups. I, you know, my mm -hmm. groups that I leave, lead is, um, you know, I've been working primarily with women on really sinking into the the i am center the belly center uh -huh. with the you know and being embodied in mm -hmm. your essence right right in your center so say more about that from your perspective well embodiment is how is the quality of of a siddha a miraculous ability can only happen through embodiment um a gift is something that overflows you you have to release okay Mm -hmm. So, so the, the trek from releasing your gift and getting so many reflections back at some point that instead of feeling overwhelmed, you take it into your heart again, like you did originally with the shadow mm -hmm. to get to the gift. But this time it takes you through the secret journey and I, not secret. I mean, it's just it's secret in the sense that the secret will keep itself until you figure out how to do it or find the way to do it. Yeah. Because there really, there really is intimate, no. A very well, personal, intimate channel as well. 
Yeah, but the minute you come back into your heart again, it will take you down into your center this time. Mm -hmm. after getting so many reflections of releasing your gift out there in service to others. So at a whole different level of frequency and rather than the wounded child that you're loving and that opens a gift. Now you've shared that gift with so many people and got so many reflections from so many different mirrors. Um, like the uh, metaphor of Ind Indra's net, I N D R A Indra's net. Google it. If you've never heard that Indra's mm -hmm. net, that's a really neat thing. It's all about, it's a net of mirrors, all of which you, all of you're reflected in all those mirrors and at the same time all those mirrors are reflected in you so once that happens and you come back into your heart it sends you just down into your being and and that's just the simplest way to put it that channel of essence is open and you're in your mm -hmm. center and you literally go through kind of like a death process because you have to leave the small separate self behind forever now there's always a little bit of a trace of it left even at the gift level because it arises in response to the shadow. You can see the gift in the shadow as a yin yang sort of thing. The, the siddha is just including all of that and they're just opening up like the sun from that yin yang and, and just boom, all of a sudden now, the third force is there, it's the third force, that which makes everything happen. Yes. <clears throat> so um, when, yeah, when you get, when you, so that channel, opens through the heart, moves down into your center, into your divine core, and um, always, every time is new, it's never repeatable. That's how you know it's the real thing. Usually the temperature drops too. If you're truly connected with essence, you'll find that the temperature drops and you're in the presence of higher consciousness, ultimately your own, but in, for quite a while, you may need to um, actually project that onto other forms that you create through your imagination around you as beings capable of doing that, but after you're in touch with essence and you learn to center in that place, you can actually start to have communication with actual higher consciousness entities that do exist and they're all over the place. Mm -hmm. But that only, hap that only happens after you uh, find that channel and learn to settle into there. And it may not happen for a while either. It may take a while of being in your center and being in your essence, because you may have a lot of things to do in the world for a while with that siddha. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and reflecting reality through your actions in, a, in group in group scenarios that do a lot of good in the world before you have moments that open for you on your own or in very intimate gatherings with a few, where all of a sudden you find yourself as part of some larger organism of consciousness that you didn't even know was possible to co communicate with until you came together with four or five or a dozen or 20 or 30 other individuals of the same persuasion in the same frequency that all of a sudden you started mirroring a higher form of intelligence, but it took a bunch of you to do it because it took that combined because there are those kind of beings existing in, in, um, and that's a much better way to start looking at what possibly angels and other things might be. They're not these guys with wings that do good and blah, blah, blah. They're actually very like, you can almost, they're almost, it's almost like a technical description, isn't it? To, to say that we're all these beings with a, you know, we're at, we're at a certain frequency and we're aligned in a certain sacred geometry that attracts um, the way the universe works and that intelligence of the way that works through our consciousnesses and a way we can experience an extant, expanded perception of, you know, and insight into why we're here and what we're doing here and what we're connected with and where we come from. And it can open a lot of different directions at that point. Nice, nice. So do you have a process that you would like to guide people through before we um, yeah sure open for questions or sure I mean we can we can do a real this is one that's gonna go that I did in the first first vegan synergy meditation okay. and it's it's one that's kind of one of my favorites um, because we're not going to start from the shadow and go up we're gonna start we're gonna open the Siddha and allow, allow it to encompass the gift and the, and the um, the shadow it's kind of a nice way to work it's a very nice way to introduce people in too because as you can see if you start from the shadow people could can run and head for the hills and take cover oh my god this guy's a vegan terrorist get out of here who did she who did she bring you know <laughs> just kidding um so <clears throat> yeah this is very simple three questions the first question is and this is about the Siddha, believe it or not. It's going gonna, it's gonna to catch you, though, because it's not going to be what you expect if you've never heard this before. 
especially as the first of three questions. If this was your last moment on earth, right now, would you be okay with it? In other words, are you ready to step beyond your individual physical boundaried self into something beyond anything you may never have conceived of before? Are you okay with that? Because it's not just about what you've done in your life and what you're leaving behind. It's also about what you're stepping into. And I think most people just look at the what you're leaving behind and go, oh, I'm okay. You know, I've done everything I can do. But it's also about are you ready to step into what's in front of you? Because that's going to be something you've never been in before. And it's going to take you to a place way beyond anything because your body's not going to be there to, to shunt so many of the higher frequencies of consciousness that it does for us. Yeah, exactly. So just chew on that for a moment. Just step into that space for a moment. If you've never been there for a moment, use your creative imagination and end your existence right now and just say, okay, I'm all of a sudden no longer in this body anymore. Where am I? Just have fun with it. It doesn't have to be serious. It can just be a playful um, exploration into what is your response to that? And just open to it for a moment and uh, without judgment or anything, just checking out what is this place I'm in all of a sudden. And you might, you know, uh, I'll just describe um, the process and each of you can um, do it yourself. Um, but I will describe these, this sense down in my being of a very powerful stream of energy that's just going straight up vertically right through the center of my divine cords. And it's just in one little spot in my divine core. It's not going up through the whole top of me or down through the whole bottom of me. It's just in my divine core, this powerful sense of vertical thrust. But it's, it's light and it's luminous and it's peaceful and it's expansive and it's very relaxed. It's very... Um, uh, a, se a sense, a deep, deep sense of accomplishment and, re and release and relief. And almost like a flowering of something, but very quickly, like all of a sudden, you drop something into a still pond and the ripples created this flowering of growth in ripples around me in all directions that are actually creative possibilities of all kinds of unknown, different trajectories I could go on and all very enjoyable. And so that's just a possibility of stepping into that <clears throat> moment and owning it and, and then allowing it to take you for a little bit. So now I'm going to come back to the place where I asked that question and we'll step into question number two. As much as it's, when I get into that, I, I, <laughs> the sense is I'd like to stay there for a while, but I, I'm going to keep on our purpose here. And question number two is, <clears throat> what in your life are you giving your totality to? You're 100%, no holds barred, everything in. And I'm not just talking about what you really like to do or who you really like to talk with or where you really want to go in the world, but something uh, that puts you in touch with everything you have and giving it your all in terms of service to others in the world without holding anything back. And that's obviously the question of the gift. What in your life are you giving your 100% totality to? Exactly. Correct. <clears throat> And so for me, it's that in, I was expressing this in the latest vegan synergy meditation, which I lead in vegan world 2026, which we talked about at the beginning of this interview. Um, it's that invincible drive I have. Um, it's hard, it gets harder and harder to put it into words, but I guess the best way to say it now is to be an example of the Tao, to be an example of the Tao in human form for the benefit of all beings everywhere. Um, and by the Tao, I mean that third force that where the yin and the yang um, come together and blend and, and um, 
they just give a sense of let nature take its course. Let, let each thing be, be what it is to the best of its own ability. And may I help everybody to do that. So that, that was a really good way to say that. And that's my way of saying it. I've heard it said different ways. But that's the first time I've ever said it my way. And that's my gift. That's what I'm giving my totality to. That's where my, be, that's where my, my true heart is at. I don't want to mix that up with being. Being was the thing we just did before, where we stepped into a whole new world. The gift is about the heart and how I want to give my heart to the world. And I see that by being myself, that's the best way that gives space to others in being around me, that they can be themselves to the best of their ability. So that's truly what Accelerated Collective Evolution is about in essence, is that's the space I'm providing for people and creating a platform for so that when they step out of that connection of Accelerated Collective Evolution and move into their life, the best that they can give starts to grow in them. That 100%, and if it's not there yet, it, op it, it starts, to, starts to show you the way it can open in your life and become that guiding influence in your life, that invincible desire to, you know, go beyond your limitations and do something remarkable in the world that um, allows others to be remarkable too. I mean, otherwise, I mean, that's how I keep bringing it back to that, you know, that why would I want to serve? Well, because the more happy everybody is around me, it's just a nicer place to be. You know? And the third question, What's holding you back? What's stopping you? Why aren't you moving on that? And how come it's not as big as you want it to be? I mean, you could think of it in a lot of different ways, but what's holding you back? Yes, that's the essence of it. And, and I, I truly hope that everybody who's listening is, is uh, and who listens in the future to this as a, a recording is jumping into this because this is really how you get a taste of um, what it is, accelerated collective evolution. And this is applying it in a descending octave sort of way instead of a ascending octave sort of way. So this is a creative process. When you descend, you create. So we're coming from our siddha. We've just stepped beyond ourselves into a greater po realm of possibilities. So that essence is now coming with us through our heart, through the gift question, and now into the sh whatever shadow in us needs this the most is where we can invite this to go. It's not going to go there automatically, but we can ask that it does go there by our intent to ask that it go there. So please allow this, what I've opened to, to come to this place where I'm being held back. And it may, for me, it, uh, when that happens, it's almost like a light showering on a rock or something or water splashing on a, a pearl or it's like something fluid and alive hitting something solid and hard. <laughs> but that's beautiful because when it does, what I see is the both of them transform and there's not a rock or water there anymore. There's just this, it's, it's kind of a very unfamiliar feeling because it's not something we're used to um, bringing something like that into a place where we're stuck. And it also feels like it's a, it's something is getting through into a very tight space where usually nothing can get through. So now it's eking through there. And so I just opened to that and I, I, I just, um, Realize that it has a lot to do with my own ment mental conditioning because the mind is where we find most of our, the source of most of our problems. <laughs> the way we've been taught to use our mind is very faulty. Um, through nobody's fault, it's just an unconscious way of behaving as uh, a species that has evolved out of a very intense survival oriented, um, you know, lifestyle to one now where technology has uh, made great strides and given us an incredible amount of comfort in our life, but at the same time is destroying the planet very quickly. If we don't start getting some accelerated collective evolutionary collectives <laughs> to address it. So that was fun to link all that in like that. I mean, it's for me, it's always enjoyable to do it like that as an actual story instead of some kind of artificial structure, you know, which is also okay. 
to sometimes you need an artificial structure where you put it up on the board and say this is the hypothesis and if you do it but if you actually can take all of this and go right back into where we started from with the climate healing and the, the vegan you know it, it just keeps everything tuned into the world um i hope it also inspires people to maybe take a little bit more of a look into climate healers and all about vegan and vegan world 2026 and 2026 and radish.org and all these different um things I've mentioned that are all part of what we're all involved in. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll include you in that, Deborah, because I know you're, you're part of what involved me in all of this in the first place. Yeah. Through, excellent. through, the, through the climate healers. Yes. Through our summit. So um, I, 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 that was just to bring us back to here and now and um, complete the, uh, that little um, process that I hope was a useful and beneficial in your life process for everybody. It was, it was beautiful for me to um, really feel just that, you know, that, that heavenly space, <clears throat> excuse me, space, and then bring that into, okay, what do I want to share with the world? And then into the shadow, right? It mm -hmm. going from the Siddha to the gift to the shadow. And it was actually an experience where, you know, I could feel that. So, you know, I would just extend the question for people, um, you know, in a minute here, we'll open up for Q and A. Actually, there's something I want to I want to ask Darmendra about before we go to the Q and A, if that's okay. But I, but meanwhile, you know, take a minute, and just like be with what just transpired for you and what you're we're feeling with that. And I'd love to hear your you know what um, what came up for you, what moved with you, and uh, we'll be happy to. Uh, I'm saying we. And I know that we will be happy to address questions if you have a, questions coming up about it as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's a beautiful um, uh, pathway toward mm -hmm. healing and toward bringing things into um, alignment and bring, bringing, you know, we mentioned earlier, like having, sitting on your own and wishing for a world of peace and a world of sustainability and a world of compassion and love and all of those things and really bringing it home to, okay, what's holding me back from really living it? Mm -hmm. Living it and being a contribution to that through the life that I live. So mm -hmm. that's a beautiful process there. And I thank you for that. And real quickly, I'll just say, <clears throat> just to kind of zoom out so everybody can see the big picture of how this meeting went. We went through an evolution first. We went from the shadow through the veganism and just getting really stark about it and then into the gift and then into the Siddha. And then you said, well, how about an exercise? So then I said, okay, let's start from the Siddha, go back to the gift and then back into the shadow. So if you want to do something and create something in the world, you need to evolve. You need to mm -hmm. take and go into the, start in the shadow, look at what's going on, bring it into your heart, find your strength, share your gift. And then hopefully you reflect reality because if you do, then something can come into the world of great benefit. And then, like you said, very accurately, if, if you want to heal, and if you, if you, and, but you can also use it to evolve, uh, and not evolve to, um, to be a channel, to be a vehicle for, uh, to be a teacher, to be a guide, to be somebody who's bringing through higher intelligence through your form, but you may need to heal first. So that might be the right. layer you go through first when you start with the Siddha, go into the gift and then move it right into the shadow. Yeah. Okay. So that was a complete, and that gives that us a, our inner work that we need to do basically. And so that was a complete process. The evolution yeah. and the involution is just like saying the yin and the yang. Okay. And so now when we move into the questions, that's the third force, because that will make it real for people out there. We, okay. So yeah. everything I described as we were doing the whole meeting, we, we're actually applying, which is also another quality of accelerated evolution that I like that comes through when I do it, is that I'm not just talking about something, I'm also doing what I'm talking about as I'm talking about. It. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now, um, the question that I want to ask you before we uh, go to open for, for uh, our attendees, the, we got into this a little bit on Thursday in the meeting on Thursday it was mm -hmm. about what's coming ahead in with the cosmic evolution, if you will, mm -hmm. if I'm saying mm -hmm. that correctly, or for mm -hmm. the year 2027, what's coming ahead and how that is like, I know that there is a big evolution that's coming that is going to um, change. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to call it our, our pathways, our, uh, how we 
how we relate, how we connect. And I'm, I'm going to just lay it out there and let you answer. I only know, like, I think this much of it and you uh -huh. have a much bigger picture. Uh huh. Okay. I think. <laughs> so. Okay. Oh, so that was the question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So as I understand it, humanity and all of life is going through an upgrade that's going to reach the uh, peak in 2027 and that's why vegan world 2026 is so quintessential to all of that mm -hmm. because without there being any uh, life on the planet this whole upgrade is uh, it needs us and the rest of the life forms on this planet for that to occur without that without that as a basis there will be no 2027 upgrade happening it's just it's not going to occur yeah. But, as, but as a result of that upgrade, um, there, uh, the, the um, genetic tendency to butcher animals is going to be gone. There will be no more support of that genetically and beings coming through after that point, nor in the big astrological picture on a collective level, which we are affected by. Um, astrologically, there won't be any more uh, support for that. So beings who, who are doing that, that connection will be broken. And... Um, <clears throat> And that was, in the ancient world, the way that I guess man felt one with animals, by heating them, which I guess from a limited primitive point of view um, could be the, the sacred, the thing they saw as sacred is becoming one with animals. They didn't realize, they didn't have the moral um, fiber developed yet in them to realize that, that they weren't really given a snort about the animal and in their yeah. way of becoming one with it didn't consider the animal at all just themselves yeah so the new way the new way that is going to be coming and i've been i practice it through the internal martial arts i do every i i practice a thing called dragon style bagua linking palms every day as part of what i do every day it's a very very beautiful form of bagua um and it's eight different animals and so for me, becoming one with animals is about uh, moving in the spirit and with the spirit of each animal to celebrate each animal without causing any harm whatsoever. And uh, yeah, and so there's a whole nother way of tuning, because I liked when you asked me about that, could we go into the animal thing? And I think what we humans are here to do is to bring out the animal inside us and, and learn and, and, and not only guide it, but be guided by it in bringing it out. Um, there have been some very wise predecessors that have lived in nature and studied the animals and, um, and learned not just of their outer movement, uh, but of their inner essence and how to express that, especially through internal martial arts has so many beautiful, through qigong and, and different forms of um, physical discipline and energetic discipline to start to tune into um, nature and the natural world and start to become one with it in, 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 a, in, a, in the really sacred way, where you celebrate every life through your own expression. You become the artist of life through your movement. Mm -hmm. you know? And that's just one example. You could do it through music, you could do it through painting, you could do it through architecture. I don't know, that's just, I'm a movement mm -hmm. artist. So mm -hmm. that's one, way, one possible way to express it. Nice. But, um, but in order to um, make that, I, I think that, that is a possibility, you know, for people to start to tune into. But in the bigger picture, yeah, in 2027, when everything uh, gets that upgrade, eventually what's going to happen is all those, um, it, further down the road after that, all those aspects of us that we go through as an egg inside the womb to become human, everything we step through for a moment where every single form of life that's ever occurred on this planet from a cell to a human in the womb, we forget that. So it's in us literally in us cellularly, biologically, we have the potential, every single one of those forms. Part of our evolution is to bring full conscious awareness and evolution to every single one of those aspects. Could you imagine what it'd be like if we could become fully conscious of all those aspects in ourselves and bring that into our world? What a world we'd have. That Now that's somewhere down the line in the future that would be an incredible, but that's where we're going. That's eventually- You're talking about really coming from, from the womb as a-, as a um, well, what I'm talking, you we we could use the metaphor of stepping into a, a womb, or a room. I.e., it's the same thing: a womb, a room, where you're creating something. And in this case, it's the collective future of humanity, where we where we start to give conscious expression to the essence of everything we've been through from the cell to human, and apply it in life to mirror nature and to create a world we can live in that's functioning in ways that would be hardly even imaginable right now. But mm -hmm. 
where we have Beautiful. all the where we have all the capacities of everything we've been through in our evolution and we can be in touch with that and as a collective we can share and learn how to develop it and work with it and some might have some better than others and that's part of accelerated collective evolution that's what we want to open is all that stuff even that can be brought into this circle of shadow gift siddha there are 64 animals of siddhas gifts and animals i even have a chart for that but we don't, i don't want to do it now because it would be too much time i think right now to do that but i have a chart of that too that comes from the same gene keys, you know, the, the totem animals, totem index. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so it's there too. I mean, it's, it's all been um, looked into, but I'm interested in developing all of it and working with all of it. And that's part of what we can do with accelerated collective evolution. That's an actual, now see this was, I knew this was gonna have a nice flavor, this opening of the animal and human connection because how, how else are we gonna bring out all our skills, you know, in life? And if you really want to get the bigger picture, we have animals here as um, a part of, a, let's call it our shadow, but we're going to bring them into our heart and turn them into our gifts. But we also have angels up here, just as many, that we can start to tune into through the siddhas and bring down into our heart. And, and when we blend, we are capable of blending the capacity of angels and animals right here in our heart. Again, that would be the actual way of opening it up. Because then we'd have all the instinctual skills of the animals and all the brilliant intelligence of all the angels coming together in the open, compassionate heart of a human. Wow. Beautiful. So I'll just leave that like that. I've never even touched that one before. That's a really, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful opening. And that to me is the purpose of accelerated collective evolution. You come to a point where you find something new that could actually have a great benefit to the world. So it's not just some, it's not just some ID. I think everybody, in this meeting could relate to what I said one way or another, because there's just so much opening to it and something that I don't know if it's really been opened like this before. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Beautiful. That wisdom of the earth with the um, intelligence of spirit. And heaven. 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 Yeah. Heaven, earth, and humanity. That's the yeah. three. That's the three. Heaven, earth, yeah. and humanity. Beautiful. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot more that I that we could go into on that, but I want to be conscious of time as well. And right. See. So I, I just, and before we go into just one quick sentence, I hope mm -hmm. we can do more of these. Uh, that would be so much fun. I would love it. Yep. Yep. I'd absolutely, absolutely love it because I've got about five different directions. I'd like to go to like talk more about, about different things. I don't know about you, but yeah. we could be here for all day. We could be here for yeah, hours, yeah. I'm sure. Obviously, um, we went way beyond the original intent of the timing. So that yeah. kind of, it always happens when you do this, too. There's just no way you can stop it. Time goes so quickly because you're moving at a different frequency. So questions, please. Yeah. Okay. There's one here in the Q&A. And you know what? I want to say one, well, a long one. Okay. Hang on. Hang on. Just because I don't know if people on the, in the Facebook can see that or not, but it doesn't matter. So look, I just want to say, add one more thing. Now, you know, you're talking to um, Vegan World 2026 came about because, and I'll say this because I think this is very significant and it tied into what you just said, Darmendra, they're, they're, the, our children that are coming onto the planet right now are coming in with gifts and with messages and they're coming in, they're not going to live in the way that we have lived, the way that with you and I in our age grew up. They're not going to live on that planet. Mm -hmm. They're not wired for it and they're speaking out about it and they're bringing messages to us and that is incredible. Now, Silesh actually got this message from his granddaughter who said, you know, started asking him questions about <clears throat> why we eat animals and basically said, Grandpa, we cannot do this. Mm -hmm. And Grandpa, you've got to do something about this. And he said, but, but this is my job. And she said, well, Grandpa, you're not doing your job very well. <laughs> she said this to him and she yeah. gave him, she gave him until 2026 to get this done. This came from a little girl. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and, I, and I'm, I, you know, we might look at that and say, oh, how cute and laugh about that. But the children coming onto the planet right now are coming with a purpose and a message and they're not wired in the same way. And they're mm -hmm. already preparing for this evolution that Darmendra was talking about, about what's coming in no coincidence, 2027. Now I've done uh, work with and had you know, done interviews, a couple of interviews with um, Karen Curry Parker, who is very big in the human design um, world and she's talked about the year 2027 and the changes that are coming in that time and she and I've talked about veganism as well as we've both been longtime vegans 
Now, she's, um, so she's brought that in and I've had that in my consciousness. So when I met Silash and he was talking about, this is how we've got a, like, got a plan to actually help the world transition into this by the year of 2026, because we have to do it for climate change change, excuse me, and we have to do it for all of these other reasons, you know, and putting that together with this 2027 thing, which then I, I met you and you also can, you know, have that information and that knowledge about what's coming in 2027. And speaking of that, it's like, yes, it is all coming together. The cosmic evolution that is happening mm -hmm. is, you know, that, that is basically shifting uh, how we are going to be as beings on this planet is is there and it's happening and the work that we're doing through the C climate healers and vegan world 2026 is saying okay world here's how we're going to shepherd this in here's how we're going to help us all to like you know the world to transition so that we can hopefully have a smoother transition into where we're going anyway and That's deborah awesome. something very important to to say in regards to all that is it's only for theirs who want to catch it if you don't want to catch it it's not going to be there for you and you're probably going to become a um, cell phone zombie or something a lot of the planet may go that way it's it's only it, it, it has to be intentional you have to want to catch it and you have to be looking for it and it's if anything's increased uh, it's the capacity for it to be available for people who are looking for it. But you have to be looking for it. You have to want that change. Obviously, the children coming in are already wired differently. They're going to be bringing that message. But you have to want to listen to it. You have to be ready to hear it. So it, it's intentional. It has to be intentional. It has to be conscious. Because otherwise, it's the same as whatever's come in the past. And that's not real. Because if it's an upgrade, it has to be different. Yeah. So intentional, conscious, and willing to catch it, yeah, yeah. To catch all of what you just said, you got to you got to be there and uh, to catch that. So that it's, it's just really important that I say that on that note. It's not just it's not just oh boy, we're all just going upgraded. No, we're not. You're not going to upgrade unless you want to upgrade. You have to intentionally want it because it's okay. going to take you through the shadows. The shadows are not an easy place to get through. You have to work. It has to be work. Yeah. It's not a it's not a downhill run. It's evolution. That's uphill. Like wow. salmon going upstream, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so to speak. So that's very important to say. It's not yeah, a new okay, agey. It's not a new agey. We're going to be showered with divine grace and everybody's going to be better. Does, that's not how awakening works. And you know it. You spent 20 years, as you told me, with the Sufi masters. So you know mm -hmm. what you got to. You know what you got to go through. It's a lot of work. Oh yeah, it's not easy. It gets easier, but it's it gets, not easier. It gets it get, easier it get, because you understand what you're going well, through and you become more familiar with. You, you know, become better through it is what it yes. is. Yes. It never, it, it's familiar it's what with it becoming is. better. And so it's worth it. Yes. Yes. But okay. it doesn't stop as long as we're in body. Okay. Let me yeah. read this question. This is from, yes. um, from Kimberly. Okay. And I hope, um, let's see. The most disturbing to me is if I, is I find even if people know they are harming and creating suffering for our fellow creatures, who are all sentient beings, they don't care. They say animals taste good. For example, love their bacon. I've been vegan for about a decade for the animals, which when I heard about factory farming was a no brainer and does not and does directly impact the environment, truly makes me question what new thought teachers teach about our true selves as being love. It seems to it seems to completely ignore, minimize, and deny our evil side and hardened hearts that at least Christianity admits and addresses as a sin nature that separates us from God. So many New Age teachings want to sidestep it or seem to be plagued with and has real you, life You skipped effects. a line. You skipped Did a I? line. Or, oh, or call I, it you shadow, but it is our evil you. nature. That's, Go that for other it. Creatures you read it. You're going to do better than that. Yeah, that other creatures don't seem to be plagued with and has real life effects which are destroying our planet. It's more than wounds, ego, or unconsciousness. It's malintent to harm or destroy. How can we as people resolve the reality of the badness within us? Well, that's... See, this is the thing. Um, in order to have an effect on the badness 
within us, in the world around us, we have to get in touch with the shadow in ourself. Because if we're not in touch with the shadow in ourself, we're doing exactly what this question implies. And we're just shoving it off into some unconscious realm where we can't take, you know, well, I don't have to take responsibility for that. It's unconscious. I, I don't even know what to, I'd have to go to a psych. I can't, I don't have the money to afford a psychologist to tell me how screwed up. Da, 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 da. There's so many, this is, this accelerated collective evolution is the answer to that. It's like, get in touch with your shadow, find out what it is that a shadow is in the first place. Then, then you become so much more. And if you tie all this into the end of our discourse today about animals and connecting to animals and celebrating their spirit through movement and other forms, you start to get a whole other idea of what a shadow might mean in the sense of, you know, a not fully um, a developed capacity through humanity, say through, a, say through a dog. It hasn't quite reached a human yet. But, so we can call it a shadow in relation to us, but it's not a bad shadow. It's something we can celebrate. You can also start to learn to, to, to celebrate shadows when they come through animal forms through us. And then you, you start to have a real um, arsenal of positive um, shadow forms that have been gifted through your heart to reflect back to humanity when you face that badness. It takes a lot of courage to do, too, to stand with that kind of, um, that kind of uh, inner... Um, accelerated consciousness of the shadow shining through your heart is a gift to the to the shadows that are going to be presented to you out in the world from people who are going to continue to remain willfully ignorant knowing full well how much suffering is going on out there and still participating in paying for the hits by buying animal products paying for the hits that kill the animals they may not do it directly but it's being done so there's got to be some way. I found that one of the most powerful ways to affect positive change in others around me is to be open to their shadow. Take it deep into my heart and just like I did with my own shadow, love it. And then reflect back what that loved shadow is back to them. That has such a profound effect on people. It really does. Uh, but you have to start with yourself. Uh, if, you're, if you want to get real about the question you're asking, you have to start with your own shadows. You have to start to learn to love all of you, every single part of you every single shadow in you and um, you know but at the same time while you're learning with each shadow you can also learn the gift in the siddha too so that each place can open and flower and then you can move on to the next shadow and then the next shadow yeah, because that's basically how the process of awakening works anyway we go through one shadow and find the next and the next god i thought i was already enlightened no god now i got another one to go through crap oh, i felt so good and now what happened you know but anyway, that's just to get real about it. And our, you know, uh, our evil nature is here to be evolved. It's here to wake up, grow up, and um, act like it. <laughs> you know, that's it. so. It's not a bad thing that shadow, whatever you want to call it. It's the animals in us that we've locked inside cages, and we're butchering, and we're eating, and uh, that's 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 something I wanted to address too. So I'm glad this question opened that. If you're eating meat, you're butchering the animals in yourself. You're, I mean, you're butchering and eat, you're eating butchered animals. Well, you know, those animals are a part of you that you went through in the womb in your own evolution to become human. And we're all connected. So if you really get that, how can you cut up yourself like that in that place? Every time you eat a dead animal, you're, you're eating something you destroyed within yourself. No wonder humanity is not evolving. We're destroying the potentials in us at, all, at every turn. And that's not where the future is going. It's going to open up to where all of those things are going to become our gifts. They're going to evolve into our gifts the way that we spread our humanity into a multi-dimensional expression of creativity in the most unbelievable way. Those are all powers in us. Every single animal is a power in us. Every time you, every time you falsely sacrifice for some non-existent God, a, a, an innocent being, all you've done is destroy your innocence. Y that's it. That's all. Yeah. Maybe in the past, like we said, it could have may, might, there be, might have been no choice because that was an evolution we had to go through at that time. We're not there anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're way beyond that. We're way, yeah. We need to be way more responsible for our actions. So I hope that, I don't know if that addressed that answer, that or not, but I hope it gave you some avenues to address everything you're um, <clears throat> encountering with that question. Yes. So you're welcome to uh, respond with a, a follow up there if you'd like. Anyone else has questions, you're welcome to to um, uh, pop them into the Q and A box. Um, Darmendra, this has been fabulous. I greatly appreciate your time. 
and your wisdom and your courage and your uh, clarity and everything that you've shared with us today. I, mm. um, I think, you know, I would love, love, love to have you back and some time to do this again and do more of it, take it to next step, mm. next level, however that works. Yeah, I want to throw something out to you before we go, because I see okay. that you're kind of a host of various, um, you know, facilitations like um, doing Silas Rao and, and Jane and Shane and the whole sequence of climate healers. And I don't know when it could come down the road, but I think it'd be a fabulous idea. And this is, I'm going to go way, way out here. If we, if you could host, and I would definitely be one of the speakers on it, but, um, and I'll give you a list of names of people who I think could do this. Because since I mentioned this thing of a society of, of the enlightened, I would love to see a, a kind of like in the Climate Healers Summit sort of scenario of one day after another, uh, one or two speakers, of, of one that would consist of, to, to, to address what's going on in the world right now, because I think we need it more now than ever, Eckhart Tolle, Gangaji, Mother Mira, Amaji. Get where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. Thomas, Thomas Hubble. People that are awakened now as teachers on the planet. I, I don't know if they'd even do it, but just an hour of their time, even if you could get it and then put it together as one that was recorded to address what's going on on the planet, I think would be one of the most powerful things we could do on the planet right now. Yeah, I would love to and, do some. I would love to do that. You're, I mean, you're aware of all those people, right? And the yes. fact that they are, they are all awakened teachers. And I'm sure I forgot a few. I was just trying to give a handful of of those who might be. And I'm just a different new kind of type. Like I say, I go from, you know, I'm a very ordinary guy, but I also move in that way too. But some of them are super clean and they just work with essence, like an Eckhart Tolle. He's pretty much just an essence. He's like a cute little baby all the time. That's essence, you know, <laughs> or Gangaji, who's, who, who is like right there. Too. You know, there's certain of them, they're just raw essence. And that's why they can be the way they are when they're doing what they're doing, you know. But, but just, just a, a whole mix of, you know, and then Thomas Hubble, who's a lot more like me, he's a doctor. And so it's a little bit more, um, you know, he's a little bit more, uh, you know, flush in terms of cash and all that, but it doesn't matter. I mean, he, he's very down to earth and simple and I've heard him talk and it reminds me a lot of the way I do stuff too, you know, he's, so it's just different, you know, different people from different walks of life all awakened in, in a conference with what's going on in, in the world right now. And maybe even asking each one, what do you think is the most important step humanity could take right now in facing all? You know, something where, because that's, that's a very good be, question. That to me is like uh, getting very real about it. And so I just wanted to take an opportunity since I've seen you host a few of these, and you probably hosted a bunch of them, I don't know, um, since I'm still getting familiar with you and your work, to do something really radical like that, because I think it's time. And we have so little time. And, yeah, and yeah, and, it's, to, and it is very important right now. And you know, as as we as we started to get into on Thursday, you know, talking about just the, the in the way that things are changing, and it is it is all related. Mm -hmm. and we don't have time to go off into this topic right now, but the, the yeah, with the no, sacred just feminine, just to end it, and uh -huh. the you know, and because that's a piece that has to be brought in with this as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you yeah. know the the um the evolution of the sacred feminine or the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. you know the and the whole yeah, exactly. journey thing yeah yeah uh, macrocosm microcosm putting all that together and that will be another topic that will may, maybe yeah. i'll jump in on a facebook live and do that one because that's a, a, mm -hmm. a, a place of passion for me but yes yeah. you're right we need to wrap this up right now yeah. and yeah. um beautiful and, yeah this is this has been wonderful i thank you so much and yes there will be more to come um Good. And uh, yeah, I'm grateful for you, Darmindra. I appreciate you. And uh, I appreciate everyone who's been here to be a part of this and um, uh, listen in, contribute. By all means, please share the video. It's on Facebook in the Community for Conscious Living uh, Facebook group or on the Joyfully Living Wellness page. And uh, you're welcome to share, um, let's see, I'll, I'll send out, if you're on my email list, I'll send out a, a link to the recordings, uh, other places you can share outside of yeah. Facebook as well. Yeah, right, I'd like that, to, thank you. So are, is that it then? Or are you saying, are we signing I, out? I'm saying thank you, I'm signing out, but do you want to say a closing word? Oh, no, I just wanted to make sure in that list of enlightened ones, I, I forgot Adi Ashanti and A.H. Almas, because they're also they're also part of it. And all, and somebody who doesn't necessarily consider himself that, but I, I wonder, because he's the creator of the Jinkies, is Richard Rudd. So that would be an incredible sequence of people to, um, 
to put forth uh, that. I don't know. It's just something that came up in me and I just feel like, um, you know, I want to start a dialogue between enlightened people because I think that's one that hasn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. And even though we're, I'm working to help people own their enlightenment and let's create, you know, circles like that. I also want to take those that already got it and create circles of those now. Why wait? You know what I'm saying? Yes. That's yes. all. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's it. That's all. Yes. I just wanted to add that last little bit for the record, for the public record. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I'll just say I've, um, our uh, Community for Conscious Living Prayer and Healing Circle is tomorrow morning, Sunday morning at 10 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 7 a.m. U.S. Pacific Time. Please join us for that as well, as that is where we really bring our hearts together and, um, and uh, pray for, for peace and for our collective evolution. And... Uh, to uh, personal transformation for uni universal harmony, helping to heal the planet by making inspired changes in ourselves and in our daily lives to create a sustainable environment and a peaceful world. So thank you all very much. And thank you, Darmendra.